Hello Facebook! I'm so excited that you guys are here. Happy Tuesday evening. Tonight we are talking about our uh, sporting our thyroid naturally by using doTERRA essential oils. So let's get on with the class. Any of you have thyroid issues? You do? Do you take thyroid medication? I do. Okay. Anybody else? No? All right. I do not take thyroid medication, but Tom does. So, um, and actually we're working on getting him off of his medication. Interesting, interesting info. So what is the thyroid? It's a butterfly shaped endocrine gland that is under the voice box and it's around the windpipe connected by a narrow connective tissue. The thyroid produces three hormones, T3, T4, and calcitonin. So T3 and T4, um, the iodine is the main building block for that hormone. Uh, your body cannot make iodine. You have to get your iodine through our food. So it is essential. Um, calcitonin is produced by C cells and it assists with um, calcium and bone metabolism. So the thyroid gland, hypothalamus, and the pituitary gland all communicate together. So our brain health is just as important as our thyroid. Um, so they talk together to deliver the proper hormones that we need in our bloodstream. And when those blood, when the hormones are released, the, um, it's carried in our blood, but the hormones attach to the proteins in the blood. And then it's carried to the, the certain parts of our body that our hormones need to work with. Okay. So what does the thyroid do? Let's learn. <laughs> it speeds up and slows down our metabolism. Also takes care of the peristalsis of the gut. So peristalsis of the gut, also known as moving our food all the way down through to have a bowel movement. It also takes care of the fat burning capability, cognitive function. There's those brain function and again, heart function, maintenance of our mood, and bones, it affects our sleep. The thyroid affects our liver function. Liver is pretty important because that is where a lot of our hormones are made. So think of it, you know, our, our we're dealing with hormones, you know, with the thyroid. So, and then of course, uh, the thyroid also controls our cortisol levels because when the brain senses some sort of stress, these, uh, then that hypothalamus and, and pituitary gland signals the thyroid that we need more T3, T4. And then our energy levels. Almost all the cells in our body have thyroid receptor sites. Now here's the most best beautiful thing about our oils is um, the oils clean receptor sites so when you are on medication, the, you know, people will say, oh, well, your medication is just more powerful. Well, yes, in a way, but no, because your receptor sites got cleaned, that all the ick, the toxic garbage that we all have in our bodies have gotten clean off of the receptor sites, and then the medication has been able to get into the cell a little bit easier. Does that make sense? So factors to uh, thyroid uh, disorder. There's some main factors. So number one, our nutrition. If you don't have good nutrition, it's very, very difficult for our thyroid to fall in line. Number one, uh, two is autoimmune. Graves disease, Hashimoto's, those are two autoimmune diseases. Liver overwhelmed, like liver is all, you know, it stores all of our toxins because it's a huge filtering organ for us. So everything that we've eaten and drinking and taken any type of prescription medication, that's all sitting in the liver. And I know that I talk so much about love your liver. We have to cleanse our liver. We have to take care of our liver. 
and we can do that with um, with our products. It was very my research that I had seen had uh, was um, very a little overwhelming because there was a huge estrogen component to it for your thyroid, um, and we'll talk a lot about estrogen dominance as well this evening. Uh, gut health. That microbiome is amazing. Did anybody catch the webinar the, the last week? I have it waiting for the replay. Okay. I yeah, because you're busy. <laughs> Absolutely, totally. Absolutely. You know, that's why I gave you the replay. That's why I was like, who cares if you're out there live? Just get the replay. Yeah, exactly. You know, but it's amazing. The, micro, the gut microbiome, we have just as much colonies in our gut. Well, we have more, but the skin is just as much. There's a microbiome on the skin as well. Very fascinating. So I can't wait to hear what you think of our... Of course, there's other factors for thyroid health is also um, our stress and our sleep quality. All right, I'm going to read... I just literally copy and paste this quote because I felt that it was, it just kind of made me take, take back and, and I just want to talk a little bit about it when we're done. So hormones such as estrogen, testosterone, adrenaline, and insulin are extremely important chemical messengers that affect many aspects of our health. Hormones are secreted by various glands and organs, including your thyroid, adrenals, pituitary, ovaries, testicles, and pancreas. The entire endocrine system works together to control the level of hormones circulating throughout your body. And if one or more is even slightly imbalanced, it can cause widespread major health problems. So to me, like as having somebody like for me, you know, with my adrenal glands just going crazy for so many years, that really made me go, wow. Because I've been really trying to concentrate on my adrenal glands, not realizing that I also have to watch my other hormones and stuff. Pituitary, um, you know, that brain health. So this quote was taken by Dr. Axe. And I did talk with, I mean, not talk with, but I, I Dr. Axe was one of my um, uh, researches that I, I did talking to him. So what kind of diseases are associated with thyroid? No, she can answer. <laughs> yes. What kind of diseases? Go, girl. Colds. Colds. Well. Flus. Well, if we have good gut health, we don't have cold and flu. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, don't forget coughs. And coughs, yes. Yeah. And don't forget running noses. That's true. So we have hyperthyroidism. So that's an overactive thyroid. That's a lot of T3 or T4 floating into the body. We see a lot of people, um, those people are the thin, um, high anxiety, high stressed. Um, also, they have, so you get those, that high stress. The adrenal glands are crazy and um, high heart rate. So increased blood pressure, increased blood pressure and heart rate and things like that. Those are the things we see with hyperthyroidism. Um, Graves' disease, however, is um, also hyperthyroidism, but it, that is the most common diagnosis for that, for the hyperthyroidism. Um, goiter is typically just an enlarged gland, or there's little nodules. The uh, thyroid gland actually has, like, they're like little, not, little circles of everything, and then they're kind of flattened out and then made into the but sometimes they get a little nuts and those um, will cause a problem. And that could either be hyper or hypo uh, thyroidism for goiter. There's really no either one or the other. Then there's hypothyroidism that is um, underactive uh, thyroid, usually caused by an iodine deficiency. So, I mean, I'm sure we all have it. I mean, I had it in my house too. Um, Go for it. Oh, I have hypo. You have hypo? Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, in the United States, it's not really as common to do hypothyroidism with an iodine deficiency because of our diet. And we all have a tendency to use a lot of iodinized salt. Okay. 
I was thinking word itemize. I was like, where does that come from? I'm like, you oh, got it. Salt. Okay. Yep. So back in the day, they were they added iodine to the salt so to help with the hypothyroidism treatment. Oh. That's where that comes from. Okay. So pink salt. You guys hear me talk a lot about pink salt and how that is the um, there is iodine in that not as higher quality quantities as the iodinized salt. And that's all what we all grew up with. Yeah, that's all what we grew up with. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. That pink salt is actually good for headaches. Pink salt is, it has much more minerals in it. Yes. So I, I, I would have to agree with you. But most commonly or undiagnosed is Hashimoto's. Hashimoto's is actually more common that we think and that there's so many underlying causes of Hashimoto's and Hashimoto's is an hypothyroid. So it's an underactive thyroid. So you see the weight gain and the brittle hair and the dry cracked skin and just overall not healthy or I feel off. Do you have to adjust your medication regularly? No, I get the blood work done once a year. Okay. to see what the levels are, and they're always in the normal with the prescription that I've had since I was 19. Oh, wow. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, just yesterday. <laughs> it was just yesterday. Huh. Any questions with what I've, I have? All right. So the development of autoimmune disease is multifactorial. Genetics, diet, environment, stress, hormones, and the immunological factor. There are really only two things out of those things that we can't control. So genetics, we can't control those. But we can control our diet and we can control the environment that we are living in and the stress and the hormone balancing but the immunological factors we can't. That's where the autoimmune disease comes. So let's talk supplements. Um, ashwagandha. Ashwagandha is adaptogenic. So what does that mean? Adaptogenic, basically, it, it's an herb that will fluctuate with whatever your body is needs and will help you adapt to your stress that you're having in your day. So ashwagandha will also help to heal the thyroid and the adrenal glands. So, isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. I just got some of these. I do not recommend taking it after 3 p.m. Okay. Unless you want to be up later. <laughs> <laughs> Now, um, I do know, like my kids, like I take it every day, um, and Tom takes it every day. What a huge difference in my sleep, huge difference in my sleep. I've been able to get some like good quality, even when I was sleeping five hours, four or five hours, I was able to get good quality sleep. Um, and then I just kind of was like a little more relaxed with the ebb and flows of the day. <laughs> So that was helpful. Um, and then just my kids have scanned for it lately, especially like right towards the, between the Thanksgiving and New Year time, we were like crazy busy, busy you know, with all the everything and they were scanning for it all over and over and over again. I gave it to them and they were like, we're good mom, we're good, I'm scared. And I was like, surprise, you know, they were not, insane so remember my kids are 100 pounds so like for your babies you only do like half yeah. or a quarter you know what I mean mm -hmm. but I wouldn't you know do more than that yeah. uh, selenium selenium is definitely necessary and it is in our lifelong vitality it converts t3 to balance t4 Where can you find it other than our food? Grass-finished beef. The, the term is, yes, grass-fed. 
But guess what? All cows are fed grass until a certain time, and then they, when they go to slaughter, they get grains. So let's go with grass-finished beef. Um, yellowfin tuna, halibut, sardines. I like sardines. I love the tuna. And I, 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 me too. I love the tuna. I know, I'm, I'm with you. We would carry those on hiking trips because we need protein, we need some salt, we're good to go. <laughs> a little fat. Yeah, turkey, spinach, eggs, all great sources of selenium. Zinc. Zinc helps to convert T4 to T3. So let's say if you're over in the T4, you can convert to the T3. Um, and then that is also in the lifelong vitality. And then vitamin B12 and thymine, also in the lifelong vitality. That, also, that balances hormones. So you can get that in eggs, salmon, raw cheese, raw milk. But by the way, you can find raw milk in sprouts. What? Hmm. I, they're, they're amount, they're, it's weird. I was weird. Hmm. Grass uh, finished beef, Brussels sprouts, asparagus, pistachios, and um, spinach. Probiotics. Everybody who takes their probiotic. That's the probiotic. Good. Here's the deal. We got to heal our guts. So as we were just talking about your mom, that leaky gut. So knowing that our hormones attach to the proteins in our blood and then it gets delivered places and when you have weird things in our belly that doesn't belong, you got a lot of infection. So probiotics will, um, and then of course get, gets the gluten out. Gluten, number one, uh, I was, I was re listening to a, a lecture on my way in by Dr. Marisa Snyder, the hormone lady. Um, she was talking all about th thyroid and she was just like, she just recently got diagnosed Hashimoto's and they found it because she kept feel not feeling well, kept not feeling well and she's like, there's something wrong. Well, she had an underlying parasitic problem in her gut, which I thought that was, oh, oh. So anyway, but she uh, just talks about gluten, how gluten is not good for the thyroid. Uh, terazyme, terazyme should be taken at every spinkle, especially at every meal, especially if you have Hashimoto's, which is hypothyroid. And it assists with the, di um, the digestive function. Heal the gut. So vitamin D3 or vitamin D. There's your bone nutrient. Um, that bone nutrient is uh, vitamin D2 and D3, and both of them combine is bioavailable to help absorb of calcium. And you know, you can sit in the sun, sun to skin therapy for 15 minutes a day is really good, really good. The cholesterol in your skin will convert to the pre-vitamin D3. So when I worked in the hospital, I would, uh, um, I would go have horrible seasonal blues. And a, a friend of mine just says, go see, you know, cause we, we didn't know when we took lunch. You know, it was kind of like whenever we were done with our cases and whatever. So go sit in the window. Cause we couldn't go outside because you know, we didn't know if we were going to get called in. So I would sit by a window and what a difference that was. So a little bit of sun is not a bad thing. I sit outside at recess for 15 minutes. I believe they stay for 10 minutes, then they call a five-minute warning call, so I think that's okay. Good for you. You should be outside. Get outside breathe that fresh air. Digest Zen is so important, especially anise oil. So doTERRA does have an anise oil. We did get it earlier last year. Sometimes you can find it on the DT Trading Post. Um, but it's super awesome because it does cleanse the gut. Great. Of course, citrus oils. Drink your citrus oil all day, every day. Super good as well to purify the gut. Is the digestion soft gels, can you take one of those a day? 
I, yeah, yeah, you can. I keep mine with me, and yeah. I keep it in my bag, so if I ever, because I have problems with my stomach, and I, it'll, I'll take it as soon as I kind of feel that, you know when it's yeah. coming. Well, I, I take it when I see that, or, you know, feel that there's a problem coming, but mm -hmm. I thought, can I just take it preventative one yeah. day? Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Okay. Yep. Let's talk phytoestrogen. Phytoestrogen. Yes, my children and Tom, don't tell him, gets phytoestrogen. They, they, they take a week, um, a month. I take it every day. I just take one a day because I'm not yet going through the menopausal change. But what does it do? Um, we just talked a little bit about hormones and, you know, balancing those. So in our environment, we are intaking a lot of xenoestrogens, which are our body knows them or sees them and because they act like regular normal estrogen in our body. So, um, but they're fake. So what that does is it notices a fake estrogen and it goes, hey, whoa, wait a minute, this isn't supposed to be here, get out, kind of thing, and it grabs it and takes it out. So that way when your body is releasing normal natural estrogen, it will, also, it will go where it needs to go. Also, if you have too, many, too much xenoestrogen, you're, you'll have um, what people call estrogen dominance because your body doesn't make as much estrogen as you need because it has all this fake stuff run, running around. All right, any questions about anything that we've cut before we get to oils? Go for it, girl. One thing that you should not do with digestion is put it on straight on with without coconut oil. Right. Oh no, what happens? It burns. Yeah, I heard that once. It burns. Yeah. Jonathan says the same thing. The question is, don't ever put digestion on your tongue or it will sting a whole lot. Does it sting on your tongue too? It doesn't taste good. Oh, I like it, but I like black licorice. So, let's talk oils. Frank, when in doubt, Frank it out. And then I have a bunch of other things. So, frankincense is fantastic because it takes care of that brain health. It that hypothalamus, that pituitary gland, is taken care of by the frankincense, which in turn helps communicate with the thyroid gland. Okay, so. The other thing that it's awesome for is um, cellular response. And it reprograms the cells. Remember, it, it takes that mitochondria and realizes that it's not a good cell, so it drives that cell to go away. Frankincense is amazing. It helps with hiccups, too. It does help for hiccups. Um, Headaches. Let's go with clove. Ooh. Clove. Super good, super awesome, love, love, love it. It is a little warm, so you know, you might need a little um, carrier oil. I like to put it in my coffee, and the straight reason why I'm using it is it's the polyphenols, also known as antioxidants. And it cleans the receptor sites. I just had to smell it there for a moment. I was like, yes. So cleaning those receptor sites helps our cells function. Myrrh I did not bring. I know that is sad. But I have a boy that is using myrrh currently every day, all day. Go antibiotic uh, reaction. Whee! So um, the myrrh is nothing more than decreasing stress. Stress of the body, stress of the mind, stress of the thyroid. And, the, and cellular function. Okay? And how do you use the myrrh? Myrrh, you will use that topically. Right over the thyroid. Over the thyroid. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Myrrh is a very expensive oil because it's one of the gifts that the very few wise men gave the Jesus. But it's worth every penny. It's pretty nice. It's pretty good, though. All right, lemongrass. Ooh. I love lemongrass. 
That's not, it smells so good. Very creamy, very refreshing. Yeah. 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 So lemongrass is really good to apply over the thyroid because it helps to um, move the toxins away from the thyroid. You know, think of it, think of your neck. Your neck has you know arteries and veins and then everything else that's in you know with your neck bones and your cartilage there i mean there's a lot of big blood supply coming up and down your neck so there's a lot of toxins that are going up and down your neck and the uh, lemongrass will help detoxify the uh, material okay lavender is uh, strictly just for anxiety Strictly just for emotional health. Peppermint. Oh, that's so good. Please take a whiff if you need some peppermint or to put some on if you need. Uh, peppermint is uh, the oil driver. That's why it's there. Drive those oils in, in there. Basil. You're taking care of your adrenal cortex, your cortisol levels, and your stress. Geranium. Again, adrenal cortex, cortisol level, and stress. some date balance on please do there you go you got it emotional health <laughs> i did that with peppermint i like peppermint yeah peppermint is the best peppermint is the best all right let's talk a little bit of hormones i brought three oils for hormones Number one, the hormone queen of the world, also known as clary sage. It's balancing for your, um, your estrogen production. I had to bring some sort of uh, hormones in there with all the others. Time also is balancing for progesterone. And sandalwood, yeah, yeah. And sandalwood is great for balancing testosterone. Hence why sandalwood is used in a lot of colognes. Mm -hmm. Yummy goodness. Oh, she's fine. She's fine. Don't worry. All right, let's talk detox, 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 detox. We are gonna live our life, right? So we're gonna need to detoxify our life too. So the best thing to do is to avoid, to avoid, to avoid. Avoid, to avoid the toxins. Because it's very easy to get them in, but it's very difficult to get them out. So, um, Think about those environmental things that you can control in your home to use clean product. Use that Think Dirty app. Use the ewg.org website to do your research. Um, I like the Think Dirty app because when I'm shopping at Target, I'll scan things and I'll be like, oh, or oh, perfect. Okay, welcome to my life. You know, so it's kind of fun. And there's so many things you can do. Oh, naturally totally. too on your own yeah vinegar does a lot adding essential oil to vinegar and wiping counters down a little bit of water yep there's yep. a lot you can do absolutely yeah yeah but it tastes salty too <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness so uh here's some t uh three things that talk that um take the toxins away from the iodine so the three toxins that rob your body of iodine the first one is chlorine. 
And I was like, oh, I have a chlorine pool. Okay, second one is bromide. And we get a lot of bromide in our wheat product. So hence the gluten-free, you know, getting rid of that wheat. Mm -hmm. Or trying to find some non-GMO mm -hmm. um, wheat. And then the third one is fluoride. And That's another one we grew up with. They put fluoride in everything. We the table with mm -hmm. yeah. We had a fluoride wash. And then your mouth turned completely numb. And I remember having my, like, you know, I'd be like, ah. Because my tongue would be just like, ah, just tape. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gut cleanse. Working on that microbiome of your gut. Super important to do. Super important. So many ways you can rest your your gut. I mean, there's so many things you can do. And then manage stress. So how can we manage our gut stress? We can use lime. You can use essential oils. Yes. Very good. Which one? And what else? Lemon too. Lemon. Yes, absolutely. That, that's very good. Yummy. It's good. How about Terrazyme? Takes the gut stress off. Yeah. Anything else for gut stress? How about um, not eating? You know, have go mm -hmm. not. You know, don't starve yourself. I mean, let's not be stupid. <laughs> but you know, I mean, how about just taking a break? Yeah. Emotional stress. What what can you do for emotional stress? Oh, what else? Lavender. Lavender. Yeah. Serenity. Serenity. Oh, we're going with an oil. Whatever you want. I kind of went chocolate ice and body bags, but you know, we're going with an oil. Okay, rethink. If you're one that likes to meditate, meditation. Meditation, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I just went there. Well, that's been kind of what's happening. Yeah. Exercise. Exercise, yes, yeah. How about environmental stress? What can you do? I would have to go in my desk and fresh air. Fresh air. Smart girl. You are very smart. I'm just guessing. Yeah, but you're smart. Very good. All right, let's go for some. I, I literally was writing notes in the car as I'm, you know, listening to Dr. Marisa Snyder. So, and I'm just going to go over that before I give you some recipes recipes because that's what we're here for right I like the recipes all right so um, for the um, gut take you know hopefully we don't have a parasite hopefully we don't have candida and work on that help get that healthy gut microbiome okay worst diet worst things in our diet is gluten dairy processed foods, conventional meats, and GMOs. This is thyroid specific, by the way. Um, she said, take care of your adrenal glands. Take care of your adrenal glands. Here's an interesting thing. She says, Don't, not only take care of your adrenal glands, but are you also having limbic brain exhaustion? And I was like, what? Because that sends a mess, you know, breathing something in activates our limbic brain and then sends stress down to the adrenal glands, which would go forward. I thought that was interesting. And then, of course, working on the HPA axis. Now you're going, what the heck is the HPA axis? Hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal. So adrenal glands and your brain. As I find that very interesting. Um, she said, get some exercise, even if it's a 15-minute walk of fresh air. Infrared sauna. Okay, I had my first experience with an infrared sauna this, year, this week. It was fantastic. 30 minutes, 140 degrees. I brought a towel, and I was like, okay, I'm doing okay. 
I'm doing okay. And then toward, by the end, I was like, it's really hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to see what it's going to be like in the summer. But I felt so relaxed, rejuvenated. Just, it's kind of hard to explain. And that was a sauna. Yes, infrared. So it's dry. And then they have, you know, red light in there with some music and stuff like that. So I found that been very interesting. Oh, I want to get, um, she recommended certain blood panel for thyroid. So I will give it to you. Okay, a full thyroid panel is nine different markers. So it's TSH, T3, T4, a thyroid antibody, free T3. What was that one? I'm sorry, what? What was that one you just said? The thyroid antibody. Yeah, then the mm -hmm. next one. Free T3. It's these stupid things in my mouth. Well. <laughs> free T4. Reverse T3, TPO, and TGA is what she recommends for the full thyroid panel. All right, let's get some recipes. Let's see. Okay. So... I have, um, so 10, in a rollerball, 10 mil rollerball, you can do 10 drops of each of Frank, Myrrh, Clove, Lemongrass, Lavender, and Peppermint. Topped off with fractionated coconut oil and applied to the, directly to the thyroid two to five times a day. So for hyperthyroid, remember hyper and Graves disease all fits in that. So this first recipe is for hypo? hypo? It's either one. Okay. Yep. Uh, remember the oils are naturally balancing. So whatever your your numbers are at, you're, by using the oils, it will balance you out. And then for hyperthyroid, it's two to three drops of lemongrass and myrrh applied to the thyroid and reflex points on the hands and the feet for the thyroid. And then two drops of Frank. The next recipe is for hypo. And you're going to put two to four drops of geranium and balance. And you do that one week with peppermint and clove. And then alternating weeks, you would do lemongrass and myrrh with peppermint and clove. And you would just put that over the thyroid and reflex points. And this is neat, not the rollerball? It said neat. But I like things easy. <laughs> so I would be putting it in a roller ball. Because <laughs> I'm... Yeah. Here's another thyroid blend. You can use twice a day on the thyroid and the reflex points. It's lemongrass, eight drops. Frank, five drops. Myrrh five point drops, eight lavender eight drops, and 
and clove five drops. And that's in a 10 milliliter ball as well. And the last, but not least, de-stress the, the thyroid. We're gonna add different oils now. <laughs> it's eight drops of Frank. It's gotta have Frank. Two drops of wild orange. 10 drops of lavender. And 10 drops of bergamot. And then the, the de-stressing, mm -hmm. could you like start out with that and then do the other as like a maintenance type sure. thing? Or sure. Do it all? <laughs> I would probably start with one. Okay. Because we want to make sure one works first. Right. Okay. Yeah. And then if you're like, this isn't working, then maybe try something different. Does that help? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I'm going to end here. <laughs> Stay tuned. Thank you so much, Facebook, for joining us. Hope to see you on the 5th of February for Healthy Hearts. Have a great day.